Hi, I'm Tim Berglund, and this is Kafka Streams Transformations Part 2. Now, I've said a few times how a stream can be a table and a table can be a stream. There's this duality there. Let's actually take a stream and make it into a table and see how this works. What we're going to do is we're going to count elements in a stream by key. Uh, let's look at some code. We're going to start with a stream of play events. That's song plays there on line two. And then we're going to group it. We're going to call the group by method. A group by is going to take three parameters here. The first one is a lambda describing by what we want to group. And the second two are surdies just telling it what the type of the resulting stream key and value are going to be. The much more interesting part of this is the first parameter. That's that lambda. And you see that's got a key and a value, the parameters that get passed in there. We call them song ID and song. And what we return is the thing we want to group by, and that's song ID. So we're effectively grouping by key here. We could get fancy, though. We could group by something else. This is just group by. And if we wanted to reach into the play event and find some other thing we want to group by, uh, that would be fine. We've actually got a fair amount of flexibility here in the group by method. And that new k grouped table exposes a new method called count, and this is going to allow us to count the unique occurrences of each key. Now, count seems simple enough, like, okay, here's this group table. It's a table of grouped things. Go ahead and count the things. You might wonder why we have to pass in a parameter. That's the name that this piece of state should have in the internal state store. So this is a stateful operation, and that's fairly intuitive. Counting means we're going to have to kind of look at things as they come in and maintain this group table and update counts, and there's something that's going to be held in memory. Uh, there's state uh, in this node to get this job done. Kafka Streams has internally an embedded state store that does that work. And each stateful operation that's going to accumulate state in that store, we name that piece of the store. Later on, this lets us use what's called the Interactive Queries API to go peek into that state store. And so you could, by key, which is by song ID, look in the state store and see right now what is the current count. Since you know it's called song play count, you can go into that part of the state store and query it interactively, effectively in memory uh, at runtime. So we're not going to cover interactive queries more in this introduction, but it's a super powerful feature that you'll probably want to look into more as you get going actually writing code with this thing. And if you're curious, since I brought up the whole question of state, these are stateful transformations we're doing. There's this state store that's managing them. We can go peek into it and get the details. Uh, where does that state live? Well, it does get persisted to disk locally on the node, and it gets persisted to Kafka itself. So anything that's being tracked in that state store ends up in a topic in the cluster. So if you're worried about all this distributed mutable state that we've suddenly scattered all over your application and thinking things are going to be terrible, you actually don't have to worry. Kafka Streams handles that for you. It handles persisting it to the cluster. And if one of your nodes in your stream processing application goes down, if you've got the application deployed to multiple instances, it's OK. We're able to restore the state of the state store from that topic in the cluster. and bring the new instance up to life, picking up right where the old one left off. What if we wanted to take it up a notch and maintain a list of the top five by play count? Well, that is fundamentally an aggregation operation. Of course, counting is an aggregation operation, but counting is one that's baked into the API. Your top five songs is a custom aggregation, and for that, we use the aggregate method. So let's imagine we started with a K group table, a lot like the one we just made in the last step. Here on line two, we've got a thing called song plays K group table. Now, K group table has a method called aggregate. And aggregate takes a few parameters. I want to walk through them with you one at a time. So you get an idea of how much power is available to you when you need to do fairly custom things. Now, to manage this aggregation, we need another helper class to work with. I'm not showing you the code for that class. The API is fairly obvious. But it's called top five songs. And the first thing we pass into the aggregate method is the constructor for that. You see this is the Java 8 syntax for that constructor, top five songs, colon, colon, new. The next two parameters that we pass in are lambdas for adding things into the aggregation and taking things out of the aggregation. These are separate operations. Now, they both take the same parameters, and that's an aggregate key, a value, and a thing called the aggregate. Now, the key and the value, those are just the key and the value of the new element in the stream that we're dealing with 
in this aggregation. The aggregate parameter is the instance of the top five songs object that this aggregate operation is using. So that first parameter lets it create one, and then it, it's passing it along from message to message. And that instance shows up in the aggregate parameter. Now, a quick note here, if you're not a native speaker of English, I'm saying aggregate and aggregate and they're spelled exactly the same. And I realize this is completely terrible. Aggregate is the verb, aggregate is the noun. So when we aggregate, we are producing an aggregate. And so the in the lambdas there, uh, that parameter I'm saying aggregate, because that's the thing that we're actually working with. That's the accumulated aggregated state, or as we say, our aggregate. Now the action performed by those two lambdas is when we are either adding a thing to the aggregate or removing a thing from the aggregate. And that's line three and four of the code listing, the add and the remove. And what's implied here is that top five songs class has a method called add and a method called remove for putting things into the aggregate and taking things out of the aggregate. And we simply call those inside the lambda. Then of course on line five, a little help with types and on line six, a name to use for the state store. And again, with interactive queries, we could go and peek into the state store and see what's going on in real time if we wanted to after the fact. Now you might be wondering, when might you take something out of an aggregate? Does that even make any sense? If I'm aggregating, aren't I kind of always keeping track of the new thing? And if this is always the top five, maybe I'll have some list of five things and I'll get a new play count in and I'll say, well, does this push me over the top? And should I push somebody out of the top five? And I'm, I'm kind of always keeping track and adding to the aggregate is the only thing that means anything. Well, sometimes things can come out of an aggregation and that gets us into the topic of windowing. Windowing is the last thing we're gonna look at in this introduction. And there is so much more to say about it than I'm gonna say here. Useful stuff for you to pursue in the docs, which I strongly recommend you do. Now, windowing is gonna do two things. Uh, fundamentally, of course, is gonna group things by time. We'll talk about that. It's also gonna group things by key. And you can see that in the diagram here where the Alice, Bob, and Dave events have been separated and grouped together by key. They've also been put together into boxes by event time. Now that stream at the top is labeled by a thing called processing time. And that means if we're just pulling events out of that stream, then we process them when? Well, we process them at the time that we pull them off the stream. That's, that's processing time, the time they arrive at the application. And running the same streams application, rewinding it and looking at the whole history of the stream, if we consider only processing time, we might get different results from run to run since those events will not impinge on the application in a deterministic way. Using event time is grouping them into time buckets based on the actual time that the event occurred. Not the time that we're processing it, not the time that was ingested, but the actual timing of the event itself. And so the windows that we show here are shown considering event time, which gives us deterministic results. And no matter how many times we run this application, rewinding and going back over the data with the same window definition, uh, we'll always see the same results inside the window. And here we're looking at a five minute window. That's defined on that very last line there. Uh, we say it's a five minute window and we give it a state store name and we're counting inside that window. So we're gonna group by key, and key here is apparently username, and whatever that activity is that we're counting, we're counting it inside the five minute window. So for each user, how many songs did they play in five minutes? You'd just be clicking around an awful lot to play a lot of songs in five minutes, but hey, maybe our users are impatient and we wanna know just how impatient they are. And so inside that five minute window, we're gonna be able to see how many plays did each person start. Now, this brings us to the end of this quick introduction to the Streams API for Kafka. On every single topic I've covered, there is so much more, but it's really helpful to just hit the high points the first time through. You just kind of need to know what the pieces are. That gives you a little bit of skeleton. So now when you go back through, you write some code on your own, you read the documentation, there are just a few concepts for you to hang that additional information on. So when you read about all three kinds of windowing or the details of the K-Stream or K-Table APIs, uh, you've got a little place to hang your hat and that's exactly the kind of start we wanted to give you. The best thing for you to do now is to play with the demo app. Here's a link, check it out, look at the code. You're gonna see a lot more detail in there of some actual stream processing stuff going on. There's a lot to explore here and I really hope you have fun doing it. Thank you.